Hi, and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Dr. Donald Pelto, and today we're gonna to be talking about fungal nail treatment options. Uh, for a lot of my patients that have nail fungus or are concerned about nail fungus, I put together this little chart here that's gonna help explain a little bit more about fungal nail treatment options. What we're gonna talk about are the treatments, the effectiveness, the ease of use, the recurrence, and any concerns, because those are the most, uh, most important questions that patients have when they come into the office. So we'll start with a, a topical antifungal treatment. So a topical antifungal treatment is anything that you put on the top of the nail, okay? There's different types that are out there. It tends to work better for a nail, you can see with just a little bit of superficial white discoloration in there. That's what it works better for. A, a nail, if it's totally involved, you're gonna have a hard time getting a really, a really good cure rate. What type of top, topical antifungal am I talking about? Well, really any. There's certain ones that you can buy over the counter. There's certain ones you can buy on the internet. There's certain ones you might have at your doctor's office. And there are certain ones that are used by prescription. Everyone, have, everyone has a different uh, effectiveness rate. But in my opinion, uh, they all have effectiveness rate in about 6 to 20%. Some might have a little bit more based on penetration, uh, the medication that you use, and, and things like that, okay? So they're ease of use. They're, they're really easy to apply. You apply them for nine to 12 months to see the results. The, the problem is there's, a, there's a, a high recurrence for something like this, but really there's a high recurrence for any fungus. So I, I don't want to dissuade you saying that these are worse because of the recurrence. The problem though is because of incomplete treatment. And, and if you treat it and it starts to look better, this is what I, I get from a lot of patients. Maybe they'll use a topical tea tree oil or they're gonna use a topical Vicks and it might look better, but then when they stop using it, 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 it goes back. Well, that's not that it, it, it got worse. It's just that it was never really completely treated to begin with. But the main concern is, is that it's, it's better for one nail or for mild cases. And, and with a topical antifungal, many people come into the office after they've tried a topical antifungal. So I wanna, I wanna let you know, I don't think it's your fault if these topical antifungals don't work. And there are, are a lot of home remedies, like, like I talked about before. You can, some people use Vicks, some people use tea tree oil, um, some people uh, soak them in apple cider vinegar. There's a lot of different treat, treatments. And if, if you look on the internet, there's probably hundreds or thousands of treatments. And I always say, that if there's hundreds or thousands of treatments, there's probably a reason. There's not one that really, really works well, okay? And that, this is just the category of medication. You can try them, see, see what you think. The next uh, treatment I'd like to talk about is an oral medication, okay? This is better for a nail that's totally affected. You can see how it's really kind of dystrophic and uh, thickened. And for people that have a, uh, one nail or multiple nails on both feet, an oral medication is very effective. I say it's about 60 to 80 percent effective. Uh, for most of these medications, you take some type of variation of taking one pill a day for three months or for 90 days. Sometimes you could give a booster dose afterwards a little bit. Sometimes you can use one of these other types that has a little bit of a different regimen, but basically you're taking them for about 90 days. Okay. Uh, the most common one is terbenafin or Lamisil. There's a couple of other it's called like Sporinox uh, and, and some other types that can be helpful as well, okay? There's some older ones that we don't use as much anymore. The most common one for people these days is Lamisil or Trebenefin. It's a generic medication that you take orally. The problem with, with that and any is that there is a high recurrence rate. So if you take this medication and it clears everything up, you may develop a, a recurrence because of your shoe, uh, if, if there's a fungus living in the shoe or something else like that. And, and one of the concerns and main reason people don't like to take an, an oral antifungal is because you need a blood test, like a liver function test or some other type of a, a test prior. Uh, I still find in my practice for someone that is younger, someone that's healthy, my, my main go-to is an oral antifungal medication for, for nail fungus. It does a very good job at treating it. But for those people that uh, are concerned about the liver or really don't wanna take a medication and they found that the topical treatments aren't effective, then we have a new treatment that's out there. It's been out there for a few years. It, it tends to be improving um, as time goes on. And this is a laser treatment. And here's an example of putting it in this little box and there's laser treatment. You treat all the nails at once. Uh, laser treatment has been around for a few years and there have been different types. The initial ones tended to be lasers that heated up the nail. 
and by heating it up, it kind of changed the, the, the consistency of the fungus in the nail and killed it. The challenge with the heat is that many people couldn't tolerate having that heat. They, it got too hot for them. They, they couldn't even tolerate the treatment. And because of that, it, it was ineffective, not because of the laser being ineffective, but people couldn't tolerate the heat. So these newer lasers that are out there now, they're, they're not heat generating lasers. And they're, they're, they tend to be more effective because people can tolerate the protocol. Uh, I find it's effective about 60 to 80%, so very similar to the oral medication. The treatment for one foot is about 10 or 11 minutes, and so for two feet would be 20 minutes. The nice thing is you can treat one foot or both feet if you'd like. The treatment consists of uh, four weeks of treatments. You do them one week apart. Uh, there is a high recurrence rate, but like anything else, there's a high recurrence rate. And the, and the main concern is the price. So the price can vary anywhere from 100 to 200 to 300. It really depends on uh, where you go for this type of a treatment. Uh, it tends to be what we consider like a cosmetic treatment, not usually covered by insurance, but sometimes people can use a, a flex spending account. Uh, and then the last treatment, it's not really a treatment, but it's something that can be done for cosmetics, is nail resurfacing. So if you look down here, this nail before and after, they put a, a resurfacing component on top of it. It's a cosmetic treatment. It can be done every three months. It has a price to it as well. It's, it's maybe about 150 per nail. Uh, some nail salons do that, some podiatrists do that, and it's quite effective to, let's say, hide it. So for example, let's say you are treating the nails with either uh, laser treatment or with the oral antifungals, and it's summertime, and you want to have some bad-looking nails look better. You can do a nail resurfacing, and it does a good job uh, with that. Uh, the one caveat, and I want to explain this for any of these treatments, is that to go from a, a nail that's involved with a fungus to have it totally grow out, it's gonna take about a year. So you're gonna have to use these topicals for about a year. These oral medications are gonna have to stay working in your bloodstream for about a year. And, and the laser treatment, it, it's gonna take a whole year for that new nail to grow out. So you can't really rush things. You can't say, oh, I'm gonna put on the topical and then it'll, it'll get better. You have to be consistent. You have to be careful of any recurrence or any other problems with it. Uh, and another thing you have to be aware of are really your expectations. So I always say to my patients, the treatment may not give perfect looking nails, but we are hoping for improvement in appearance. So we can make things better. Sometimes we can't make your nails look perfect. And a lot of that is a expectation of a patient, especially if your nail's been injured because some nails don't have a fungus, but they've been injured because someone stepping on something, injuring it by, by by hitting it in a, in a, in a car door or, or someone hitting it underneath a, a door that's being opened. Any type of trauma can cause a nail to get thickened and that, that thickness could be a fungus, but it also could be an injury that can't be resolved with one of these treatments. And the other thing I'd like to mention is that fifth toenails. Many patients come in because their pinky toenail is, is thickened and discolored and, and they don't like the way it looks. Well, they tend to be thicker from rubbing on the shoes and they do not clear up easily. So most people, uh, if you look at their fifth toenails, they tend to be a little bit thickened. They, they don't really clear up that well with uh, this type of antifungal treatment. If you'd uh, like to learn uh, more ab about this, you could certainly go to the website, centralmasspodiatry.com, and there's a section on there on things that we treat on fungal toenails. Hey guys, thank you for watching Healthy Living. You're going to find a few links here I'd like you to click. One is to subscribe to this channel on YouTube. Uh, also, you can learn more. There are some videos here you can see.